Good morning, all. I say good morning, all. Good morning. Let us say good morning. <laughs> Class of 2020, I sign your diplomas. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your being here. I will be brief, but hopefully I'm going to um, push you on some things that I think you need to know why uh, you're here and why this is such an important occasion for us as a college. Um, number one, we like to basically bring people into our family in a way that essentially says we honor you, we honor your future, and we intend to have you start that future by knowing not necessarily just curriculum and courses and degree programs and the like, some of which I'll talk about momentarily, but to also know what is the the philosophical backbone of this college. What do we believe and how have we come to believe it? Dr. Castro evoked the name of Medgar Evers and talked a little bit about his history. Truthfully, it's about all of our histories. It's a pursuit of justice that has enabled us to now come together in a family, in a community, such that we are now all under the umbrella of seekers of justice, of carriers of wisdom, of scholars of the word, of people who essentially want desperately to live and lead better lives. I want to suggest to you that there will be some things along the road of trying to live and lead a better life that this college intends to impart to you. One of them has to do with just today's ceremony. I walked around and said to a few young people, will you do me a favor and take your hat off? There's a time and a place for everything. This is neither the time nor the place for a hat. So unless it is part of a custom or a tradition, I would ask that you remove your hat when you come in here for these ceremonies. Please understand, this is not to denigrate anybody. This is simply our way of saying that your road ahead is going to be filled with rules of the road, rules of engagement that you should actually understand. And we will love you as you go through those roads and as you come to learn what those rules of engagement are, and sometimes cautiously, carefully, and lovingly, we will ask you to abide by them. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, a wonderful friend of mine who actually kind of considers himself to be somewhat of a futurist once said to me, when I was asking him the question about why, particularly now, do you think that it's OK in this country for people to leave people behind, to leave folks behind who are poor, to leave people behind who have not gone to or have the benefit of high quality schooling. Why would a country this, opul uh, this opulent feel that morally it is OK to leave people, communities, whole groups of youngsters behind? And his answer to me was, Rudy, the future is already here. The problem is it is not yet evenly distributed. And I want you to hear that last part. You are living in what, for me, is the future. I sat in a chair just like this. Most of us did the same many, many, for me, many, 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 many years ago. And little did I know at that point in time that I would then be all the things that I've had the opportunity to be in my career. I thought about my future, but I didn't think about it in titles and in jobs. I just thought about the fact that at some point in time, the future is a date, is a period of time. But it's so far out that I won't conceptualize it right now. Well, I'm suggesting to you that part of your being in this college and part of your being in a community of people of color and part of the definition of the good life is that you will understand how you should be thinking about your future and to be explicit about that, to be thoughtful about that, to engage in conversation about that, to wrestle with it a little bit. And I'm suggesting to you that for all of us in this college, part of our mission 
is to in fact distribute the future more equitably so that there are people who are in and around this college right now, sitting in a third grade, a fifth grade, a tenth grade, some running the streets right now, somebody going in and hoping that somebody will give them some money on the Panhandle Street, somebody who's actually sitting in the subway doesn't know what to do with their life today. Somebody is sitting out here hoping that the future will be equally distributed for them just as it's going to be for you. The chore that I'm going to ask you as freshmen, as a class of 2020, the chore I'm giving you, the chore we as a faculty and staff have given ourselves, is the chore of simply saying every action that we provide with and for you is an action that leans toward the arc of justice but it gives you an opportunity to understand how you will fulfill your chore, how you will do your duty in making sure that freedom, that justice, that the scales of justice, that the word of Medgar Evers, that the emblem of this college is carried with you, body, mind, and soul. Now, I'm asking you to do that now as freshmen, but there will be moments throughout the year when you will say, wow, it's too hard to carry. Wow, I didn't know that the world basically doesn't pay attention to me. Things are not as they should be. What would that mean to you as you go through your life? What it means is that you earn the right, you have the right to protest, to say out loud, this is an injustice, this is wrong, to vote, to bring your voice into the body politic in a way that suggests you have the power to change. Medgar Evers is named for the man who amplified change, who exemplified what it meant to stand in the breach with courage and ask you to be different, dare a world and a country to be different. All of that is subsumed in this notion of being a freshman at Medgar Evers College. And there are things along the way that I want to suggest to you are going to be building bridges many, many more along the way than maybe you even had six months or a year or two years ago. And the faculty in this college, the people who have generously given of their intellect, their time, their scholarship, their research, and who will give that to you. They are leaning toward being able to help you build yourself in the image of that which you see or seek for yourselves going out into your careers. New faculty coming to this college have grown in number. We were in 14-15, uh, we added additional 19 people. In the 15-16 academic year, another 17. And in the fall of this year, another 10 faculty. So you can see that as enrollment is growing, our faculty size is increasing. And with that size has come a diversity of intellect, a diversity of scholarship that they bring to the table. It's too voluminous to go through now, but I will tell you, get to know your faculty. Talk with them. Hear them out. Exchange with them the ideas that you have about your life. Ask them the hard questions. How did you get where you are? What does it take to get a PhD? All of you in here are geniuses. We make no exception about that. I don't care what you get on a test. Actually, I do care, but I mean, I don't care about that, literally. <laughs> I don't care whether you think of yourself as having been brilliant or not brilliant. I'm telling you, in this landscape, on this court, you're an intellectual player. And we expect you to act like that, and our faculty will treat you and regard you as such. The research they ask you to do, the papers they ask you to do, the reading they ask you to do, the studying that they're going to ask you to do, all suggest a level of rigor and a level of, of, of belief in your capabilities that si literally symbolizes what our belief in you really is about. Now, I'm going to tell you that the world is not always going to tell you how brilliant you are. Freshmen, please get this in your mind. Don't get it twisted about, well, you know, I got an SAT score of X. It's not about that. This is the ability to adapt. 
This is the intellectual capability that comes from having been in the social environments you've been in and that now you get to extrapolate from those social environments and adapt that ability, that intellect, that social cognitive development that you've made to now adapt it to a classroom environment where there is language and research behind who you are and what you are. And the fact that you will then have the opportunity in working with this faculty to combine both who you are, what you are, and now to understand it from a research standpoint, from a literature standpoint, makes you really eligible to be called geniuses. And I'm telling you, when I see you in the hallways and I say, hey, how you doing? I know, whether you know it or not, I know I'm talking to one of Medgar's geniuses. When I see your eyes look like you just got finished getting out of a test and you're, not, and you're very worried about whether or not you got an A or an F, I'm still talking to one of Medgar's geniuses. People, as this enrollment grows, Medgar grows, and we are now on the rise because you are here. And the college needs you. It needs the rubbing together of your mind and your, and your soul as a way of being able to make ourselves the sort of fiery torch for the cause of equity and justice and a different pattern of distribution of intelligence and skill, the likes of which this community and this world needs. Let me just say a couple of other things. There are new degree programs that have come to the college. Many, many more on its way as well. The new degree programs include everything from uh, a dual enrollment uh, credit program, graduate school programs, an MBA program in the School of, Educa uh, the School of uh, Business Administration. Um, we have an entirely new first ever honors program here in the college. We have a pipeline program that is designed to actually provide opportunities for young people that I talked about earlier in the third and fourth and fifth and eighth and tenth grades, all of whom I believe are capable of being able to come in this or any college in America and do extraordinarily well and then do extraordinary things. The college is waiting for greatness to essentially not just graduate, but as my father told me, break out of there. Don't just saunter. Don't act like somebody gave you a gift. Act like you made this happen because the God-given talent that's in your mind and in your body rose to the surface and just bloomed in front of a whole school. You are our garden. I'm going to say one other thing to you that I think is important about some of the other activities that are going on in the college that you might not necessarily connect with this journey that I'm describing or this picture that I'm painting of what's in this college. Last year we had, uh, with the, the compliments of uh, the Male Development uh, Center, uh, we had a barber shop. We had a barber shop. And somebody said to me one day, long, long after it first started. They said, why, why, why is Medgar, I was on 42nd Street, I'll, I'll just leave it right there. Um, they said, why are you doing a barbershop? I said, because the world of people who transact business and who actually understand how to engage in conversation about really critical things in their life happens. That act, that transaction happens in the barbershop. We should never be the underestimators of the power and the beauty of the exchanges that happen to us sociologically in places like the barbershop. It isn't just about getting our hair cut or our opportunity to get our wigs done. <laughs> Y'all think I don't know what that is because you, you think I'm old, right? It isn't just about that. It's about how people in community literally beat our tribal drum about the greatness of who we are, about the trials and tribulations that we sometimes face about the needs of a community and how we're going to respond to those needs. 
some of the best learning, some of the best exchanges, some of the most intellectual, in-depth conversations that I've ever had have been with people in the barbershop, some of whom never, ever went to one day of school. So when you think about the lineage of these things that we're doing, they are connected to the lineage of us in the diaspora, in our ability to understand who we are and where we have come from. The Women's Center, the exact same thing. A similar set of activities there. Our athletic program, again, completed last year with several championships. We ought to really understand what it means to be a student athlete in Medgar. How hard it is, first of all, to just simply be that good in your own sport, but then also to be a student at the same time. Honor them, exchange with them, go to the games, see these young men and women perform. We have, as you might guess, a whole plan, very, very, very oriented toward after this, you will have to go get a job. After your freshman year and your sophomore year and you hit the stage at Barclay, the intent of Medgar is to make sure you have not only a diploma, but a job. Now, that's going to push you in some directions that you necessarily might not necessarily be ready to push, be pushed in. I actually think this decision should have been made a long time ago. You can change it, but the fact of the matter is, what you want to do with your life and your career plans literally has to now begin to be part and parcel of what the experience is through internships and through graduate school programs and through advanced degree programs here at the college. And so we are building a whole portfolio of activities connected to the academic programming that you'll be involved in in your degree uh, or area of concentration. We're building a whole connective tissue with the world of work. So more and more of you who are interested in the arts, we now have a bachelor's in fine arts program, more and more of you may in fact be able to go directly from High, uh, from, co from a college graduation stage into the world of the arts. More and more of you who are interested in medicine, in law, in economics, in business, in entrepreneurialism, all of that represents the pathways that we're now building a whole scaffolding with the business community, with the arts community, with all of the other industrial support services and, and supports that you actually want to go out in and, uh, and facilitate your own growth and development in. One of the things that I had a number of students who said to me last year about uh, uh, feeling safe on campus, and I remembered saying to them, well, we're in the process of getting new cameras and uh, new security uh, personnel and additional, rather, security personnel, and we've done both. We have additional security personnel this year. In addition to that, we have cameras all over this campus. Um, and let me tell you what that's about. It's not so much just about finding out if somebody did something wrong, albeit I want to know that as well. But really what it's about is making sure that we all do feel you know, safe by being on this campus and feel that we can essentially express ourselves in and around the campus in ways that would be understood and valued and appreciated without it then beginning to be in some way uh, denigrated by harmful activities that some would seek. I'm going to close on a couple of other notes here that are, that are really important. Um, when I talk about these extended opportunities, I'm talking about bringing some major, major, major players to the table, and the faculty are the ones who've actually done this the most. So Google is now in play. The Brooklyn Navy Yard is now in play. All of the work that you see happening, all of the film studios and the artist studios that you see happening uh, out in the, uh, in, the, in the Navy Yard, all of that is in play. We have MCU having a bank on this campus, soon to be uh, literally on the campus where students will in fact be uh, the workers in that bank uh, for credit. Uh, that's in the process of, being, uh, of coming to us. We have a union, uh, DC 37, that has opened up their doors in wanting to be able to provide opportunities for students uh, so that they become, if you will, interns through uh, the work uh, that they'll be providing. 
Um, I can't tell you enough how important building out those partnerships will be, but I will tell you that it'll be in time for you as freshmen uh, to really see the fruits uh, of that labor. Uh, I started this by saying that uh, the, the future is here, but it simply hasn't been distributed equally yet. Um, our intent this year is to make you agents of that distribution, to help us to do that work, to connect your dots, and then to ask you to turn around and help someone else connect their dots. Now, I'm going to say one last thing about that. That's someone that you may connect. That's someone who actually needs your help. That's someone who is reaching out and doesn't even know your name. May in fact be someone of a different color. They may be someone whose first name or whose last name ends in something your name doesn't end in. It may be someone who faith, whose faith is a different faith. It may be someone who dresses differently than you do. Please know if you hear nothing else of what I said, this college is built on the foundation of human love. It is based on the fact that every single one of you in this freshman class, every single one of you here today and those not here, will be treated with respect and with love, and we expect you to do the same in return. To everyone, for everyone, and for the good of not the college, but for the good of the world. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>